14. John chapter 14. I will read from verse 1 through 3. Uh, may I just use this opportunity to appeal to those of us who are here. You take a look over there and you will see we are building a house for our God. Uh, we've been on it for quite a while. And the reason it looks as if it is slow is because we refuse to take a loan from the bank. We believe our God is rich enough to build a house. Uh, but uh, it's not going to drop Naira from heaven. What he needs to finish that building is already in your pocket. Make sure you build for God and he will build for you. Do I hear your amen loud and clear? John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, let me stop there and ask you to turn to your neighbor right and left and say, Don't worry. Your tomorrow will be all right. <laughs> in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. In my father's house. Make there are all manners of buildings that we call houses. The office is a house. Uh, social gathering centers, a house. Where you sleep at night is also a house. But the house that Jesus Christ is referring to here is what he calls my father's house. The meaning of that is my ultimate resting place. You know, when we go to work, we do all manners of things. You go to the market to buy, you sell. But at night, you go somewhere to sleep. In this case, he's talking about where I will be finally. You know, I, I like my brothers, the Igbos. Everywhere they go to trade and do whatever they want to do, they have accommodations there. But come Christmas time, where do they go? They go to the village. And if you go to the villages, <laughs> you'll be amazed at mansions. I mean, I mean, you will be amazed. The village itself may have a total of uh, maybe uh, 20, 25 houses. And then you see one mighty mansion there. It belongs to somebody who works in Lagos. And there's nothing you can do to keep a normal evil man in Lagos at Christmas time. 
He has gone to the village, my last resting place. It will amaze you that the moment you are born, you begin a journey, a journey back to where you came from. Every day after you are born is a day less on your journey to your final hope. That's why nobody ever asks you, how young is your child? What do they ask? Ah, how old? <laughs> Even if it's only two days old, it's old, not young. Why? Because we are walking steadily back to somewhere, which will be the final resting place. The Bible may declare we are on a pilgrimage. Everybody whether you like it or not, you are steadily moving on. That's, that's why it's a very unwise thing to waste time. Because time cannot be wasted. Is the one who says he's wasting time that is wasting himself. Time goes on steadily, like a river flowing. In Genesis 47, from verse 7 to 9, Genesis 47, 7 to 9, Pharaoh asked Jacob, How old are you? Oh, he said, The years of my pilgrimage. It's 130. I've been on this journey for 130 years. When Joseph wanted to die, in Genesis chapter 50, from verse 24 to 26, Genesis 50, 24 to 26, he told his brethren, I'm in Egypt, prime minister, big man. He said, but God is going to visit you. When, he die, when I die and it is time for God to send you back to your homeland, don't leave my bones here. This is not my home. Take me back to my home. And so in Exodus chapter 13, verse 19, Exodus 13, verse 19, hundreds of years later, when the children of Israel were to leave Egypt, Moses took the bones of Jacob with him. Home. We're all going somewhere called home. And it's a compulsory journey. There's nothing you can do to say I won't go. <laughs> you are going. Anytime my, my children look at me and say, hey, Daddy, you are growing old. I always laugh. I say, what about you? <laughs> we are growing old together. Yes, very soon I will be 83. That's one year extra. By that time, you will be one year extra. We are all going. There is no exception at all. Exodus chapter 1 verse 8. Exodus 1 verse 8 tells us, Pharaoh, as great as he was, died, and a new king arose. Kings will die. <laughs> K 
king makers, we die. The Bible tells us, 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 1. 1 Samuel 25, verse 1. He says, Samuel died. Samuel was the original kingmakers in Israel. He was the one who made Saul king. And later on, when he removed Saul from being king, I mean, when God removed Saul from being king, he was the one who anointed David to be king. Kingmakers will die. Just as the king. <laughs> Prophets we die. No, it doesn't matter the anointing. Whether the general vice likes it or not, he's going. <laughs> Why? Second Kings chapter 13. You can read from verse 14 to 21. Second Kings 13 from verse 14 to 21. He said, and Elisha was sick with the sickness with which he died. What happened? How could somebody with double portion anointing die? Even the anointing kept on walking after he was dead. The anointing didn't die, but the carrier of the anointing died. Prophets will go, kings will go, kingmakers will go, overseers will go. The <laughs> Bible says whether you are wise or you are foolish, you will die. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 16. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 16. The wise and the fools, they die alike. So you may have PhD, you will die. You may never have more than primary school, you will go. <laughs> that is no respect of persons. The rich will die. No, no matter how wealthy you become, you can be the richest man in the whole world. You are going. What about the poor? Ah. <laughs> I mean, if the rich is going to die, <laughs> how can the poor escape? Luke chapter 16, from verse 19 to 31. Luke 16, from verse 19 to 31. It talks about a man who was so rich. Every day in his life was Christmas. I mean, every day was feast time. He would just wake up in the morning, dress joyously, and then uh, begin to feast. And then there was a poor fellow called Lazarus. He would come and just take whatever crumbs fell down from the table. Uh, they, they, they were enough. The, those, the, the, the ex, uh, uh, the, the, what do you call it now? The extras. They were enough to feed that man. And the interesting thing was that the rich man didn't even bother. Take as much crumb as you like. He didn't do anything to him or didn't quarrel with him, didn't chase him away. But both of them died. The rich man died. The poor man died also. That brings us to this crucial topic. But because I don't know why they chose this topic for this period. When we die, where are we going? Because there are two kinds of houses over there. When we finish, Matthew 25, you can read it from verse 31 to 46, Matthew 25, from verse 31 to 46, Jesus Christ said, a day is coming 
when every one of us will be gathered together. They will put some people on the right. They, they are called sheep. They put another group on the left. They are called goats. <laughs> you say, when is that day coming? I don't know. But everything that is happening, according to what is in the Bible, shows clearly it is closer than you think. Oh, what sends somebody to heaven does not really have anything to do with where he's living. Today, now, Russia is fighting Ukraine. <laughs> it started like a joke. Everybody thought that the battle, the whole thing will be over within a short period. I mean, Russia is big. Ukraine is not that big. But little by little, the thing is escalating. And uh, Russia is saying, <laughs> I'm not joking. Oh. If this boy misbehave, I have something that I can use. But what he can use can be something that is detonated in Ukraine, and it will affect those who are in Nigeria. Anything, anything from a distance you can't even imagine. Anything can happen that will say, hey, the end has come. And then when that end comes, God will group us into two groups, one on the right, one on the left. You read that passage. And then he will say, all right, those of you are on the left. Go to that place that has been prepared for you by God. In my father's house. And those of you who didn't do the way you, should, what I expect you to do, go to the other house that uh, the Bible refers to as hell. Please, brethren, don't let anybody deceive you. The idea of two homes had been known to our forefathers. That they, 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 that's why they sing among my people. Uh, they say, hey, don't be wicked or not, because you are going somewhere. When you get to the gate, <laughs> you will give an account. Oh, our forefathers, I'm talking of far, 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 far. Before Christianity or Islam came, they knew that the earth the world we are in. It's not the end of the story. No, no, no. That is shown in their behaviors. <laughs> You'll be amazed how strict they are when it comes to how you must behave towards your neighbors. I, in those days, when I was younger, you'd be going to the farm, and beside the road, they will put bananas in heaps, and then they will put the cost of one heap there, maybe one penny. And somebody, and then the, old, the farmer will go home, with, go back to his work and be working. When he comes in the evening, 
all the heaps that had been bought will have the money there waiting for him. <laughs> you go and put your banana <laughs> along the road. <laughs> In a booty matter. And put the naira to show this is how much you and come back in the evening. The banana will be gone. And there will be no naira waiting for you. But they go further than that. If you are going and you came across the layers of bananas, maybe five layers, and you have money to buy all, you do not buy all. You leave at least one heap behind. Why? Because somebody else is coming. He will also need bananas. Just think of their standards. How strict. As young as I was in those days, when if a visitor comes to visit my dad, and there are two seats. My dad is sitting on one, my mom is sitting on another, and this stranger comes in and he's a man. My mother automatically, out of respect for the friend of his uh, husband, will stand up to offer the seat. And you will think that what the man would do is to go straight and sit on the chair that had been vacated by my mom. No. My dad will get up, sit on the chair vacated by my mom, so that his friend can sit on his own chair. Why? You don't want to share the heat of your friend's wife. That's the standard then. That's why you can travel for years and put your wife in care of your friend. Do that today. So what is in the Bible, that's why the Bible says, those who died before the days of Jesus Christ, they had the law written in their hearts. God has put in their hearts the way they must behave if they are to enter into my father's house. The other house that is called hell, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14, Isaiah 5, verse 14, it says, Hell is constantly enlarging his mouth. Because he knows more and more people will be coming there. That's why the Bible says, hey, hey, Wide is the gate. That goes to hell. And many people will walk there. Narrow is the gate that goes to my father's house. Few there be that will find it. I pray you be among the few. That's why the Bible tells us when the end is about to take place. There will be all manners of doctrines. Even preachers We begin to preach in a way that we say, hey, relax. It's not as difficult as somebody like Pastor Adeboye is making it. Hey, don't mind him. He's old-fashioned. All right. Narrow is the gate. And I believe it is because God loves you. 
more than anyone, and that's why somehow he brought this topic up at a time like this. At a time like this, when uh, we should be talking about things that, you know, we'll be clapping and jumping up and saying, Amen, Hallelujah. My beloved brothers and sisters, the end is nearer than you think. Things are getting worse and worse and worse. To warn us to wake up, wake up. <laughs> they arrested one of my pastors somewhere abroad. What was his offense? He was going to speak. And he got up and said, ladies and gentlemen, that was his offense. Some people reported him that is discriminatory. He said, ladies and gentlemen, what about those of us who are neither ladies nor gentlemen? Oh. True, so I'm not joking. That's how far the world has gone. No, you think things are bad. You don't know all the details. I saw a woman, and uh, I think there was a discussion that led finally to uh, where's her husband? Oh, he couldn't come. Oh, I see. Are you hearing from him? No, he doesn't talk. Uh, then, uh, how are you sure he's okay? Well, I, I took him to the vet before I came. You took him to the vet? He doesn't talk. Who is your husband? He's a very handsome dog. We are closer to the end than before. Those of you who are already in Christ, take this matter seriously. Don't let anybody weaken your stand for him. God is holy. And those of you <laughs> who are still fooling around just playing church, you sing like we sing, you clap like we clap, and you keep on enjoying sing. Jesus said, I will come back again. He's coming. And if we arrive before I finish the summer, and if you are not on his side, you won't go to the Father's house. You are going somewhere, that one is for sure. <laughs> and hell is ready, he says, enlarging to take him more and more. But the one who called me sent me on an errand to tell those of you who will listen, there is a place called my father's house. That's where I'm going. And I want to see you there. So if you think that all that is going on nowadays, all manners of preachings, all manners of, if you think that it's a joke, it's not, there's no joking matter here. The devil wants to have a harvest. But in the name that's above every other name, you will not be one of those who harvest. Half a word is enough for the wise. Those of us who say we are Christian, tighten your bells. 
If you are a backslider, hey, run back to Jesus. There is a place called my father's house. That's where I'm going. And that's where I want to see you too on the last day. And those of you who have not given your life to Jesus Christ before, and you think all this born again business is a, is a joke. Oh. <laughs> Since I started speaking, eh, more than 30 minutes has gone. And like I told my children in one of our money devotion not too long ago, no matter how anointed anybody can be, you cannot bring back October 2024. It's gone. Gone forever. Before you know it, the year of 2024 itself will be gone. I will be entering into a brand new year. I pray I will see you in the new year. But more than that, I want to see you in the Father's house. So if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, come and surrender your life to him. Come and come very quickly. If you know you are backsliding, you used to be serious with God. Now you are taking things casually. Somebody had told you that you can continue to live in sin after you claim to be born again. You better come, come to Jesus Christ now. I'm going to count from one to five. One. To him save your soul so that on that last day you will be in his father's house with him. Three. The choice is yours. If you want, you come. If you want, you may not come. Only God knows. How many of us we see tomorrow? Four. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. We want to specially thank you for being consistent in keeping touch with every of our uploads. Not just our uploads, but everything that God is doing via His servant, Pastor Ia Deboye. And this would also enable you to grow faster, grow and keep a great peace with God. And that will bring you into the perfect fullness of what God is set to do in your life. And that aside, you shouldn't forget that everything we are today and we have is a function of the Lord and his spoken word for it is his word that brings everything to pass the bible said bringing those things that be not as though they were by his spoken word said, let there be light and there was light everything in your life can be can come to reality as long as the spoken word of god has been enacted upon it anything that has not been in existence can truly really find expression in your life provided god have said it if it were not so jesus said I would have told you and so because these things were through these things are real and spoken by the mouth of God definitely abruptly they have no alternative than to come to pass God is changing the narrative of your life and so he wants you to become a partaker you can also do and this and also become an extension of the blessing and grace the word of the Lord even to your family members friends loved ones neighbors and also your relatives simply by hitting the share share button up on this video and also let this video get to your family members friends loved ones so everyone you also desire to see this same word come to pass in their life testimonies abound of what god is said to do and for all he is still doing and so please do this share to your loved ones and engage them don't forget to like this video leave us with a comment of how wonderful god has been to your life and also we will be here to hear your testimony 
and give praise to the Lord. Don't forget to subscribe if you are a new viewer. We love you so much. It's our desire to see you come back again in our next channel, in our next video rather. God bless you so much.